on YouTube. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. UK regulator broke international law, says Facebook. Epson reaches new heights with $5,000 laser projector and debut mics from Universal Audio. Covering IT, Home AV and Pro Audio. This is Tech News Today. For Thursday, the 17th of February 2022, Tech News Today returns. Three stories as always to get through. Let's get into it. First up from the register. UK regulator broke international law, says Facebook. From the people who sat on their hands when asked for info about Giphy deal. Facebook claimed in court today that Britain's Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, broke international law when it blocked the ad company's 400 million US dollar buyout of Giphy. Facebook tried to acquire the animated images provider in May 2020 for 400 million US dollars. The UK competition body, the CMA, stepped in in the last year, stepped in, I'm sorry, last year, to block the deal after concluding it would lead to a substantial lessening of competition in the digital display advertising market. Pinterest, Reddit and Salesforce comms firm Slack all, you, all used the quote-unquote reaction images on their platforms and Facebook's acquisition values the company at 400 million US dollars. Facebook so far hasn't, allow, hasn't been allowed to integrate the startup's GIF-making tools into its own platform because of the ongoing investigation. And we'll have to unwind the deal and sell off Giphy if the CMA's competition concerns are ultimately confirmed. Earlier this year, the social networking site filed its formal legal bid against November's CMA order to sell the Giphy business. Today, a barrister for Facebook told Competition Appeals Tribunal, or CAT, judges that, quote, the adverse impact on competition in the UK was at best speculative, close quote. Adding there was, quote, global concern, close quote, about CMA blocking the merger. Mr. Justice Marcus Smith heard an eyebrow-raising ac accusation from Facebook's holding company, Meta, at the hearing in in the case between the social media network firm and the regulator bought over the stalled Giphy buyout. Quote, The legal points we're raising are that CMA misdirected itself on international law and exercised its jurisdiction in breach of international law, quote unquote, continued Meta's counsel. This case will doubtless attract global attention with such high profile claims being thrown around the, in the courtroom. Oh, I don't know about this. I, I, Facebook just seems, well, not Facebook, what are they called now? Meta just seems to want to acquire the everything. For those that may not know history, AT&T, the bell system it got so big it ended up getting broken up the fcc won that in the end what's to say a similar fate won't happen to facebook in the future responding tristan jones for the cma told mr justice marcus smith quote when submissions like these are made, the tribunal has to go through them very carefully to determine if they are relevant and admissible to the arguments being run, close quote. That attention has already crossed some international boundaries. Attempting to inverse, intervene, I'm sorry, in the case are Privacy International, the US-based Computer and Communications Industry Association, and the Application Developers Alliance. A full hearing of these issues is scheduled for next month. Facebook has been repeatedly fined by the CMA for failing to cooperate with the British authorities. Last year, it was fined £50 million from what regulators called a quote-unquote conscious refusal to report information and a quote, deliberate failure to comply, close quote, during the Giphy acquisition probe. 
Most recently in January, it received what many considered to be a token 1.5 million pound or 0.005% of its annual profits and a slap on the wrist for failing to notify CMA that key staff had quit their jobs. Uh, key staff had quit their jobs. Oh, had quit and their jobs had been filled. At the time, a CMA spokesman told the, regular, the register that Facebook's inaction breached the terms of its initial enforcement order issued to put the buyout on ice and to preserve Giphy as a standalone business. A court of appeal attempt to get the IEO thrown out failed because Facebook had, quote, sat on its hands, senior judges later ruled. The CAT case continues. Giphy must legally remain a separate business entity from Facebook until the appeal is resolved one way or another. Uh, me, me, well, what do you want to say? Seriously. I mean, is there actually anything we can say about this other than Facebook being a bully as usual when it comes to acquiring companies? Next up, from Sound and Vision, let's get into the stuff I do love more, more than most other stuff. Well, at least we're talking AV here. Epson reaches new heights with $5,000 laser projector. Oh, hang on. I forgot to line it up. That's well done, isn't it? <laughs> um, all right. Epson today announced the availability of a new three-chip LCD projector that combines improved pixel shifting with a new multi-array laser design and refined video processing algorithms to deliver better 4K performance than previous models without saf sacrificing picture brightness. How does the company's most advanced home theatre projector to date, the new ProCinema LS12000 4K Pro UHD at $5,000 US dollars, has a rated colour white brightness of 2700 lumens and supports refresh rates up to 120 frame, frames per second with frame interpolation for lower frame rates and 10 bit high dynamic range processing for content encoded with HDR10 and HDR10+, and HLG or hybrid log gamma formats. The projector is described as a bright enough, is bright enough for use in rooms with ambient light and uses real-time HDR curve adjustments with 16 steps of control for fine-tuning HDR performance regardless of content. To further improve 4K gaming at 120 FPS, Input lag times are pegged at below 20 milliseconds. Wow. A new digitally controlled precision shift glass plate refracts pixel light to display a 3840 by 12, 2160 image described as, quote, exceptionally sharp and clear, close quote. With improved color accuracy, more natural skin tones and better graduate... Uh, Gradation, according to Epson. The picture refinements are attributed to the company's new 36-bit ZX picture processor, which handles color contrast, HDR frame interpolation, and resolution enhancements in real time. Uh, the projector supports 4K 4 to 4 to 4 60 hertz chroma sampling at 12 bits and provides HDMI 2.1 HDCP 2.3 compatible ports, one of which supports Enhanced Audio Return Channel, or eARC. Epson says it's 3LCD design, which uses 3LCD chips to display 100% of the RGB colour signal for every frame, makes possible, quote, outstanding colour gamut while maintaining excellent brightness without any rainbowing or colour brightness issues, close quote, which some laser projectors, as we all know, and I know this, so everyone probably does, can have... It, it, it all, in some cases, it can look like an old rear pro TV that's out of um, convergence. The new projector includes ISF certified calibration tools and is covered by a three-year limited warranty. Epson says it also offers an anamorphic lens option. Five grand. And it's gaming compatible. You've got to admit, Epsom have come a long way with this sort of stuff over the years. 
I mean, in some cases, whether you want to put them up with Barco is a completely, well, that's a decision for you to make. I wouldn't put them in the same realm as Barco or any of the other high-end ones, but 5000 bucks for a laser projector? It's, in some cases, probably more affordable than some 80 to 100-inch uh, four-color televisions. Sharps Aquos four-color. I think Samsung's working on a four-color or have a four-color as well. So in actual fact, this is slightly cheaper than some of your bigger panel televisions. So in actual fact, when you think about it, bang for buck, it's probably not a bad deal, in all honesty. Um, you got five grand, go and grab one, I'd, I'd say. Make sure you got the right type of screen, though. You'd have to find out whether this is a silver or white screen compatible laser projector as well. All right, on to another love of mine, Pro Audio. This, as always, from Sound on Sound. Debut mics from Universal Audio. The Bock and Townsend collaborations are un unveiled. Now, we all know a U47 and a U87 from Neumann, the ultimate vocal microphone. Okay, we all know them. I know them. So if I know them, every single person in the world knows about them. I've got to say, though, just looking at these two here, well, almost all three of these, actually, they almost very look Neumann U-series, okay? For those that aren't aware, yes, I am a Neumann man when it comes to vocal microphones. And if you don't like that, you can F off, frankly. Analog Audio veterans and DSP pioneers, Universal Audio have announced their move into the microphone market with six new models. The first appears to be a result of their acquisition of the innovative microphone modeling company Townsend Labs towards the end of last year. Now, I got wind of that, and I'm not surprised it, it happened. UA had been after them for a while. Indeed, a new UA-branded Sphere L22 is fundamentally the same as a, Townsend, as a Townsend Labs debut offering. But Universal Audio have released their own version of the Sphere plug-in that runs their own, U, uh, own UAD DSP system, allowing you to hear the advanced microphone modeling in real time when using their console misc or lunar door. Now, remember, UA does have their own DAW now. You do get it, and I know this, if you get, I think it's the Apollo X8 and up. UA's plugins can also be used in your own DAW, of, of course. And we understand they, that that support for the original microphone and plugin will remain unchanged. Next up, three premium large diaphragm capacitor mics that may also look familiar to microphone anoraks. The UA Block 187, UA Block 167, and UA Block uh, Box sorry 251 are based on Neumann's U87, uh, 67, and Telefunken's ELA N uh, 251. Those three microphones are phenomenal mics. They really are. Even the Telefunken's a really nice sounding microphone. Respectively, the first being a solid state mic and the later two valve, just as the originals were. These three mics. We're all designed by microphone luminary David Bock, and though they are uh, two derived from existing microphones, UA tell us that their circuitry has been revised, resulting in improved technical specifications. Finally, the SD1 and SP1 are all new microphones, the former broadcast style dynamic and the latter, a small diaphragm capacitor mic. The SD1 is intended for close-up speech, vocal, and instrument recording and features both high-pass filter and an optional presence boost. The SP1, meanwhile, has been designed to offer excellent rejection of off-axis sounds as well as minimal self-noise. The UA Sphere L22 is priced at $1,499 US dollars. The SD1 at $379 US and the SP1 at $499 US for a matched pair, pricing for reimagined Bock mics has, is yet to be announced. Really, really good looking microphones. Phenomenally good microphones. And um, we all know Neumann. Okay, I say that because I know it. 
Uh, and as we all know, if I know it, the whole world now know it, all experts know it, everyone knows it. UA's come a long way, and I, I have to I have to say that I'm 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 glad to see them releasing a, a microphone pack now that these mics look good. I mean, you've got radio mics which can be used for podcasting as well, instrumentation mics, and then you know the U forty seven and eighty seven as well as the ELA series out of Telefunken. And I mean, you're not going to get better mics than that. That is well, well known, exceptionally well known. Um, yeah, the old I've used U forty sevens, I've used U eighty sevens. They are such a beautiful mic to record, and the vocals you get through those mics are phenomenal. I cannot beat it. But having said that, if U A can match a U87 and a U47, considering the price of those microphones, even the older U87s and 47s, UA may be onto something there, and it may be a good way to get yourself started. But kudos to Universal Audio. They really... Like, look, who cares about the colour of a microphone? Frankly, it doesn't matter how the aesthetics of the mic sound. Look, you know, you got white, black, blue, green, tealy colours. Take, if you take the colour of the mics out of the equation, how do they sound? That shit, that that's the thing you've got to be really certain about. So there we go. Wow, and the Townsend Lab one, that really looks like a good. No, not that one. That one. That really looks like a good mic. Really looks like a good mic. Um, if you are getting UA stuff, don't forget Luna is available, and I believe it's available with the Apollo X8. I don't think it comes. I can't actually. I know you get it with the X8, and I know you get it with the X16. I'm not sure if you get it under the X8, but uh, UA's own DAW doesn't look bad. I don't think it's a pitch at Mix Bus because Mix Bus is the holy grail of DAWs from my point of view. But Luna doesn't look too bad. I've sent a few videos about it, read a couple of articles about it. It doesn't look like a bad DAW, but I don't think it holds anywhere near Mixbus 32C out of Harrison. And yet these guys are affiliated with Harrison, mind you. So there we go. Really, really nice looking microphones from uh, Universal Audio. If you're in the market for a mic, I'd suggest you look at them as well. There we go. Tech news today for Thursday, the 17th of February, 2022. Stick around. More coming up. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.